Thanks, man. I mean, the show on mute might be better. What's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for joining me here today as we get the Market Recap Show kicking once again for you on a Monday, on an uneventful Eclipse Monday. Happy anniversary to my parents uh, on a day today. April the 8th. All right, what was up? What was down? UNG up a little bit today. I mean, we're going to welcome Michael Noss coming through here uh, momentarily. We'll do a couple of questions. I want to talk to him about some silver moves. He talked about silver earlier. We'll talk about silver late. So traders are staying late, and I want to thank everybody for staying with me. As I get ready to rock and roll here um, with the show, I'm just going to load it up so I can get the roll call going. It was kind of a crazier day um, here today with not that much happening. We can go over to the triple Qs. I mean, relatively uneventful day, kind of opening and closing, almost at the same spot here. We'll flip it over and put up like a five-minute chart just to have a quick little look to see. Let's go 10 to see what happens. I mean, look at this. Up, down, and around here for the Triple Qs. This is the chat that I'm talking about. I want to welcome everybody uh, that is here right now. Hey, what's up, Cali Fortunes? Says Mr. Katina. Yeah, it's not roll call yet, Christopher Holcomb, but this is welcome to everybody right there. Bang, as we have Stream Deck going. What's up, Colin Clark? And what's up to everybody else that is here today? Look, I mean, this is the NASDAQ. We had a nice move early up to 442 and change, then a little bit of a pullback, and this is all afternoon, not much happening. We did have a runner uh, this afternoon, a little bit of a runner, I was gonna say. Arm tried to get going back up to the upside. Quick flip over to the daily chart on Arm. Still a ways to go. I really like the short and in around 150, but it's hard to short a market, especially like Arm. I think this is actually a long for your long-term portfolio. And it, it might be in there right now, man. This nice little level here at 120 could be something there for ARM. So, yo, what's up to everybody? What's up, Ravi Patel? Saying, yo, what's up to me? Um, all right, so here we go. Let's just have a quick look at what stocks we're bumping around. Then we'll show you something on trade ideas. I got to be a big shout out to Michael, who's coming out uh, in just a couple minutes. Google right there, up 1.4%. So despite the NASDAQ not doing a heck of a lot, Apple to the downside, NVIDIA today to the downside. Almost time to buy some NVIDIA, I feel like. Meta down a little bit now as well. I'm not trying to be afraid to buy NVIDIA. We will talk about that in a couple minutes. On the podcast, of course, just another show that we're doing. Eli Lilly down 1%. Merck down 1%. We talked about that. I'm a little bit worried about some of these names for drug pricing. It's a little bit egregious, I feel like, trying to ask for $1,000 a month uh, for Ozempic, Wagovi, and all that when it's come out to cost pennies on that so four to five bucks seems like charging a thousand i know there's costs associated with all of that uh but we'll see on that we show is brought to you by benzinga pro so as benzinga shows up any news stories will bring them to you live here as we do have all of this uh coming through bloom energy Ooh, a little bit of BE action. We'll see if that's moving around. I don't think so. Uh, a little tax credit there, a little tax credit for Bloom Energy. Yeah, not much happening here in the aftermarket. We'll drop back down to a one minute. Oh yeah, okay. 11.60 up to 11.70. Bloom Energy goes bang. We had a fun day today as well as we waited all day for the eclipse. I want to thank everybody uh, that sent all those nice pictures in uh, regarding the eclipse but it seemed like it was a relative nothing burger. Oh, how about this? Shout out to Michael Noss. He's coming through in just a couple minutes, but look at this. This is a board, uh, whoa, do not hit X. This is a board that he created for me. These are all the different, you can see it was quite a green day today. So for XLU, we can dig down and see what names were leading the way. Right, so if we're gonna go to financials, we can see PNC today leading the way higher, right? Good opportunity to have a quick look at all of this. PNC to the upside. And you could just sort of dig in, look at what names, industrials, right? PayX, PayC uh, coming through here. So just a quick little look at pay.com. Uh, and then right into here, paychecks making moves higher. So again, pretty cool. Albertsons, or sorry, Albertsons, that's food. Albemaro coming through here um, with 7% for the materials coming to the upside. Um, FSR, oh, Fisker, I don't think they have OTC charts on here, but Fisker was up a little bit today. So a big shout out to Michael who's coming in. Look at this, consumer discretionary, led today by Tesla. So a nice move up for Tesla today. CCL as well leading the way higher. Is Carnival Cruise Lines 
possibly at a bottom here as well. So again, a big shout out to Trade Ideas. You could really see some of the opportunities that you could have here building different layouts and looking at different sectors. So financials leading the way today by PNC. Nice move to the upside. We had this stock Riley. I mean, this move was, let, let, let's scroll this down and look at Riley over here. Um, R-I-L-Y. So B Riley Financial really starting to break out. Shout out to Michael on this one. If he's looking at B Riley, Mr. Noss, look at how good this looks. I mean, to me, it looks like we're starting to break out here. A financial name that I don't know that much about, and I'm not sure if this is right at all or not. 81%? Not that I don't trust trade ideas, because I do. Let me just check this out here. What is the short float on Benzinga? There's nothing wrong with checking out uh, multiple... Uh, let's go here, Riley. All right, let's go to that. No, no, no doubt uh, checking out different... Uh, I guess what I'm looking for is different resources uh, to go. R-I-L-Y. So let's see what they have here as a short float as well. Riley. Um, yeah, so the one thing is I know where to find it on the other one. I will get this in just a second. It's on here somewhere. Short float, short float. Uh, I don't see it. All. Oh, there it is right here. Short float. Yeah, okay. So 67 68% short here on B. Riley Financial, starting to go to the upside. We really like that name. And the reason why I like this look, we'll go back to the news feed on Benzinga, is look at this. You are right now poking your head above. So, I mean, look, whatever we say, we have a sort of um, a move up here in RSI. So we think we can get going on the RSI. It's at 68. We're not making lows on the RSI as we come down, which reminds me, uh, Michael told me about Epic Pen. So I'm supposed to load that up as well. Um, and then we can sort of talk about it. But look at all of these tops coming into play right here. Look, top there, top here top here, but look at the RSI still hovering around 70, has a chance to get higher. Does it look like we're gonna break on Riley? I say yes. Shout out to whoever that was in the chat uh, for that one because definite good movement there on Riley. Let me just close this and bring this uh, pen over here. Here it is, Epic Pen. I like it, thanks for that, uh, Mr. Michael Noss. Uh, tan, everything else starting to blast out a little bit. We don't want this out. Uh, XLF, there it is again. JP Morgan, now again, if you're gonna talk about financials, they have their report coming on Wednesday. So JP Morgan really looking nice uh, to the upside right here again. This is what it looks like on a daily. Check out what this thing looks like on a weekly chart. I say you just keep on buying these names. On a weekly chart, one red candle on a weekly chart for JP Morgan last week. I know Michael looks at weekly candles, but this looks pretty good to me, man. And again, maybe you're going to get some support back down here at 173 if we ever miss on JP Morgan and have a chance to pull back into that 170 mark, I really do like that for JP Morgan. So again, right back into here, 180 potentially coming in. But as you can see, ah, I know what Michael's gonna tell me. Look at RSI, maybe topping out here and starting to head a little bit lower on the RSI. Let me know, Michael, if I hit that. Topping action in the market, but RSI starting to head down, potentially oversold, overbought conditions for JP Morgan. So we'll have a quick look at that come Friday. But the big report that I think we're all looking forward to, I don't know if it's gonna be that big or not, but Tilray, the name that we have that up for tomorrow, right? Actually, we didn't talk too much about crypto. See, I have a comma there beside earnings. There's nothing else. I thought there was a chance for something else, but there is nothing else. Uh, so Tilray, we'll wait for that coming through tomorrow again. Looking like it wants to make highs, up there near three bucks. All right, Neil, enjoy the game. I hope it's a W for the Jays. So, uh, Neil, off to that game. Everybody who's watching Major League Baseball today, especially here in Toronto, a big one, as we unveil the new seating, the new stadium sort of structure there. Should be a fun one. Uh, I know Neil will enjoy that. So, shout out to the Blue Jays um, and a possible win uh, today for the Jays. And we are filming more TikToks, so there we go. Shout out to Neil and Adara doing some TikTok. Check us out on TikTok. Neil. Right. There it is, on all social. Scan that, like, subscribe, and all of that. Uh, thank you to over 2,500 watching us as we get ready to rock and roll. What I want to talk about was actually MSOS, so some of the marijuana names coming through again today. 
Just looks like we can pop through, man. 1050, I like that log, potentially watching out for MSOS. Down here, 10 doesn't look so great. Maybe into here, eight and change. Down for some um, cannabis. Again, right into here, looking like a good level at the 50 period moving average there for cannabis. But if we're gonna look at something, I would say CGC. I really liked Aurora today, possibly breaking. We did come into that 750 area. I just thought a break high for, for um, Aurora would have been good. Short flow, 21%. What was Tilray's short float again, quickly? A 16%, okay, so still in the pocket there. Um, oh, we are gonna talk about silver with Michael. All right. So hopefully uh, Mike will have some names for us. He came up with Pan American, P-A-A-S, maybe another name. But just in looking here, look at the weekly here for silver. Now, um, an analyst I think from Kitco came out. Uh, I did have a note about this. Did talk about silver potentially also being a good play. Here it is right here. Uh, Kitco long positions um, might have something to do with Oh, it was as Niels Christensen noted that silver may have a better inflation hedge than gold due to its industrial uses. So that makes sense as we continue to make things. Silver, more use than gold. Gold been a great, great little hedge, obviously, but forget about hedge. And I think it was with Michael on Friday. We talked about the trend. Oh, darn, Adair left. I was going to ask for a water. Um, we did talk about the trend making moves higher. Silver maybe now just getting going. Like, what about when we break through 28 and change? GLD has had a nice move higher as well. So there goes gold breaking through 193 to the upside, breaking through 200. So what happens when we see silver try to follow the rest here? Um, what was it? XME, I think, was brought. There it is. Wow. See, Michael, I listen. XME talked about that. If you want to get everything, metals and mining ETF coming into play here for um, traders today. Watch out for this. If you're just not specific on individual silver or gold, XME looks pretty good breaking out as well. So, all right, what else was in play today? We could talk a little bit about that late move there in ARM. We weren't able to get into NVIDIA, but look at this. It did have that pull up to 874. I don't know how we missed that. We were trading AMD at the end of the day, and we'll go over some of this, but... AMD, nice longs here off of VWAP, taken to the upside. That was a banger of a trade. We wrote down on our sticky note, and we'll go over this maybe at the end, but we had some great trades with Apple uh, today. So again, Apple dip buys, dip buys into Apple, into the long. That worked out. Why did I like Amazon today? It was breaking out highs, man. It's high as 188. We came pretty close to that for Amazon today. It looks like it does try to hold out for that 188 top in the pre-market. But look at Amazon. We're getting pretty close uh, to taking out all those levels and just continues to march higher. Just a little like beat of its own drum. Just tick, 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 bang uh, on that. I am very thirsty. But I can't do anything. You know what? Maybe when... Okay, thanks, Ramin. I was going to say, maybe when Michael Noss comes on, uh, we'll run and get some water. But so far, so good there. A couple good trades today. It doesn't take a lot of activity to find those good trades. There was like, I think, three positive traders on the floor today. That's it. Okay, um, and yeah, it was a good day for us. We traded five na four names. We traded Tesla. But look at the mistake when we're trading Tesla. We're going to go to Michael in just a couple seconds. Look at Tesla. When we're wrong on this, and Michael can attest to this, it's not worth being long for very, very wrong for very long. So we got into Tesla. It broke. As soon as it took that bottom, sure. We got out on a 173 break. It does come all the way back up there, but we don't have to worry about it. And when it dips back in, this lets me get involved. When that came back down, it let me focus on something else, and we chose AMD long. So what we lost on, uh, on Tesla, we wound up making back on AMD. So this was one of four positive names, AMD, um, AMD Apple, ARM, and Amazon uh, for some nice wins there today. So not good, not great. There it is right here. Someone's comment here. What's up, Dr. Gold? Oh, we got to believe Dr. Gold. He says, no, silver is great, but not as a hedge on inflation. Okay, this was coming from Kitco. Niels Christensen from Kitco is what I read there. Why? Because central banks, yeah, look. I mean, as long as we keep on printing money, we know the way that this story is going to end and the market probably be okay. Will the dollar be okay? We've had some nice moves up in the dollar recently. That's very, very interesting. Wow, this is nice and cold, but it's Hydration Nation. 
Mm. Damn, that tastes so good. All right, it's Trader Talk. Are we ready? Yes. Let's go, it's Mr. Noss. Michael, how are you, my friend? And first of all, a big shout out. Thanks for that layout. I was showing mm. it today. I could come to the screen here quickly. I'll explain it while I have Michael here. But wow, absolutely. What a great opportunity, Michael, to be able to see the different um, because we talk about ETFs on this show a lot, like XLI, what's running over there? What's running in consumer discretionary? Tesla is, what's running in the financials? Thank you so much for building this. And I'm gonna say this to you and to everybody else. You can get Trader TV 20 and then they can email you. Any of our viewers that have hit this promo can definitely mm -hmm. message you, find you on X, build something similar. Hey, if you have some spare time, which might not be for very long, but that's <laughs> something that's really cool about the Trade Ideas platform, the customizability. Yeah, and the ability to share layouts, I right. think, is big because, you know, especially people like you, I, I've been there when you're recording the show. I know you're way too busy to uh, sit down and, and build something like this. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. This is a, kind of a twist on a, a layout, a dock that we've had for a long period of time. Yeah, you can see I have it up here as well. I love these um, little bar charts that might be hard for the viewers to see on the bottom. And this is showing what percentage of the stocks are up or down. Right in the market. So for example, utilities, 96%, 97% of all names in utilities were up today. That to me is slightly worrisome with a with an up day in the market. I don't know what you think about that. But if people are buying up utilities here, that's generally, in my opinion, a more defensive play. So I wonder if you noticed that. I mean, I did. I mean, I did notice about utilities today. We did talk a little bit about those. GE. Have you seen the run that GE's been on as of late? Um, it did have that move down because of uh, Verova, their GEV, uh, when they released that. Actually, this is a nice move today. Vernova GE up 6.2 percent. But look at this move. You want to talk about industrials, Michael? Huge move up, and then you get that. It's not a split, but they re they un um, released some. Or what do you call it when you spin off? Spin off. Yeah. Unlock some value with that spin off there. Nice move for GE. And then Caterpillar, Michael, acting as if this is like an NVIDIA type of name, Caterpillar, uh, really making moves up. But you know what, Michael? When I look at this, you know what I see? Look at this, man. A little bit of a move down in the RSI as we hang out to the top. What do you think maybe about Caterpillar? Am I potentially onto something? Maybe getting a little exhausted as the RSI could be pretty toppy, Mr. Noss, up here around 80. Yeah, you you spotted it head on, right? That is an RSI divergence. Now, the important thing to note, and I know you know this before the viewers, is that this is a potential warning sign. Doesn't mean that you know Caterpillar is going to tank tomorrow, and and you know the stock's going to go bankrupt or anything crazy like that. It, but they can be warning signs to say, hey, things are looking a little bit extended. And one of the things, as you brought up, Cat, I think there's a perfect example of what may occur here. We just go back a little bit further, maybe to there. You can see Caterpillar's making higher highs. Yep. And then at this time, it had that RSI or that momentum divergence as well. Right. And then it didn't sell off dramatically. But if you look at the period after that RSI divergence, you had, what, a month, maybe two of just kind of sideways action. So, again, I don't know if this is going to pull back dramatically because of it, but it is interesting to see the last time this happened, you would have been best to kind of move on to other things and come back to Caterpillar uh, when it broke out of the space. And I think that's something that's important that a lot of our viewers understand that when you know, traders like myself or yourself talk, we're just looking at areas of interest. What could possibly happen? We unfortunately don't have that crystal ball, but what we do have is back testing. And we could mm -hmm. see this has happened before, so what potentially could happen again? And then we get people in the chat talking, well, the Fed could do this, the Fed could do that. Yeah, I mean, anything can really happen. That's why we put stop orders in and we have ideas to what we are looking for. I just wanna say one more thing because Darwin in the chat here, shout out to Darwin. Michael, he said that he messaged you and you responded almost immediately to him on X. So there it is and a big shout out. Thank you, uh, Michael, for being a real one for us here as well. All right, we, I know you talked on the first show about silver um, this yep. morning when you were here this morning. 
Silver continued today, I guess. We didn't look, we, I don't really, oops, not KSLV, SLV. I don't really look at it, um, you know, throughout the day, but maybe that's a mistake. Let me see what it did here on a five minute chart or a three minute chart for the day. So we did have a nice dip down, pretty good base down there at 25 for sort of the day traders. But again, look at this. We closed there yesterday or Thursday, Friday, 25. We dip into that area and then we just get bought up. So potentially found a nice little support area. Anything interesting that you're seeing for anybody that's looking to trade some commodities or anything like that? I know you have SPY up as well. Yeah, so just one thing I wanted to point out quickly, and this could be why nothing really moved too much, is that this just looking at the volume of the S&P 500 today, nearly half of right. what it was just a couple days ago, and then you know almost a third of what it was a couple days there. So I wasn't really excited to enter anything today, knowing that the market wasn't really it wasn't really doing too much, but. I am interested in silver. Now, the problem I have, and this is a problem I talked about in the beginning uh, of this morning, is that it's a little bit ex extended, right? So I talked about P, uh, P A A S, P. Pan American. P key's right? not working. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Um, so just up a little bit too far. You know, I need to see it come back to it broke out at about $17. The eight EMA right now is about $16.50. There's a lot of things that are looking a little bit toppy on this, which, again, it could continue to run. It's just for me, I need a, a good place to put my stop loss order. And I'm not super interested in chasing something that's up from 13 all the way up to 18. I did take a look at this, and this is a, bit, a little bit more of a speculative oh, yeah. play, but this HYMC. A little uh, AMC app, action. Yeah, absolutely destroyed over the last couple of years, down like 99.9 something percent. But... A nice little breakout here two, three days ago. Pulled back, came right into the ADMA, right, came right into the $3 area, which was this resistance right here, and held that today. So I think for the short term, I'm going to start taking a look at some of these more uh, speculative and a little bit junkier names, knowing that this thing is not something I, I don't think I want to hold for the long term. But if I can play with these smaller right. names until silver pulls back or or goes sideways for a period of time then gives me an entry and then i'll take a look at more of the names that i'd want to hold for a little bit longer term like the pas just a, a way to get exposure and i'm not going to put too much money into you know this micro cap three dollar stock that's down 99 percent. but i can throw a little bit of money at it and then if silver just continues to rip from here i can get some exposure that way we have i know that was one of your favorite trades of course you are a big supporter of amc no, I, I know. Oh, yes. Uh, but that was HYMC there. Uh, they drove that one into the ground, unfortunately. You're getting some credit here on a, on a very, very similar play. If you can come to my screen, let's do this right now. G-R-O-Y. Uh, where's mm -hmm. Joe Schmo? Uh, where is he? Where is he? There he is here. G-R-O-Y, which is a gold royalty corp. Um, you had mentioned it on the show as well. Up 15% since Mr. Michael Moss uh, mentioned that to us traders and honestly michael maybe we're breaking out even more here on groy so this just goes to show you names that you've been mentioning here on the show some of these traders have been taking them hymc could be another groy maybe any comments any updates on this are you still in this name is it one that you took what does groy look like to you right now yeah, I am still in. Actually, it's funny. The second I bring it up, one thing I love about trade ideas is my marks were still there. So good, I must good. have been looking at this kind of wedge right here. I think I mentioned this one when I was talking about the potential gold breakout before that one happened. Had a nice rip. I sold a little bit into this rip, and I'm still holding some. And I see what you're saying. We've got potential two tops here yeah. at, uh, what's that, 220-ish? Uh, this one, 210. Yep. So above that, maybe I'll add back into the shares that I want. The benefit of, I talk about things I want to hold for the short period of time and things I want to hold for a longer period of time. Things like G-Roy are things that I'm okay, comfortable holding because their business model is essentially just to collect the royalties from gold miners. So even if it's moving sideways, I didn't look it up, but it's probably giving us a pretty good dividend on top of that. Yeah, did you ever get a chance? Yeah, no, I do. Uh, oh, uh, there's a dividend on that gold royalty. Okay, we like that. Um, what the heck is up with this Riley stock? 
Like, I, I don't know, I, I'll give you a second to look it up. Um, R-I-L-Y, I don't know, I clicked on it today and the cool thing about Trade Ideas, again, is I, I have this whole thing, you can click on news, there's some news here. I don't really see anything. I mean, they last reported on February 28th, um, they cut their dividend, I guess. I, I mean, this name really starting to go. And for me, Michael, I, again, 81% short. I double checked this with Benzinga. They have 67%. Either way, it's a, it's a short situation here with B. Riley Financial, and it's looking like a breakout at 26, 27 bucks here. Without knowing too much about the company, I know that doesn't matter a whole bunch to you, as you've mentioned, no. um, looking at charts, but. I think I like the long here. Are we crazy to think that or what about this B. Riley financial? I think you've got a good a good place to take it. I have a weekly chart up here with some very poorly drawn lines. Let me do that again. But this $20 or so was the breakout area talk. You know, you're talking 2019 right. now. Uh, came right back into that $13 low from 2019 or 18 and then bounced. So I like it because, again, I, I call these basement window trades, which means that you know exactly where you're wrong on a name like this. I, if, for me, if I were to see a close probably under 20 bucks a share, it's time to get out and move on and, and maybe get back in if we attempt another breakout. But I really like it just for the, the reason that you came up. I have no idea what they do. Right. I'm looking at the earnings per share up here, and they lose a lot of money. Yeah. So this would be something that I would, I'd want to do a, a quicker trade on. But with an 81% short float, if it gets going at all, I definitely could see some momentum to the upside just for a quick little hit. I have uh, your friend and mine, Brian Shannon, on tomorrow. And look what I just drew. And by the way, I just got to tell you something. Um, we have e-signal on the floor as well. They can't even figure out how to put on uh, Anchored View Up, but you guys have it right here. So I'm going to say shout out again to Trade Ideas, Trader TV 20. You just click on this. Come over to my screen quickly if you can. Fabian, if you're over there. Um, look at this. Anchored View Up right here um, to that April low right there that I'm looking at that we're trying to take out right now. Puts the anchor. I mean, I can't make this stuff up. At 2560, like literally what we're trying to break out. So I don't know. To me, that looks really good. Shout out to Trade Ideas um, and the Anchored View Up. Okay, uh, Michael, look, anything that maybe you were looking at throughout the day here? Uh, if we can get the uh, camera back again here, we are no problem. Anything that you're looking at? Before we let you go, we may not hear from you for a little while. Is there anything maybe on a swing trade for a week or two or something that's catching your eye right now that maybe we haven't heard you say yet? Uh, you've heard me say this one before, okay. but I was very impressed with the strength in natural gas today. Perfect. Again, uh, this is the same idea of the you know basement window type trade. It seems to be holding $15 just incredibly well. Every time we're at or under $15, there's some sort of buying come in place and again these trades i love uh, i'm mainly a trend trader but i love taking shots like these because again i know exactly where i'm wrong if we get a significant close under you know the this low right here back in uh, march yep that's 1420 or so if i get a uh, close below that it's time to go otherwise i want to stay involved in this because a little pop again i'm not saying that ung is on its way all the way back up to was 150 or 200 dollars, 150 bucks a share. But if I can get in at 15 and I can get out at 20 or get out of most of my position at 20, I'll be a happy camper. And that just kind of fits with a lot of the commodity themes that I've been seeing pop up in the market. We have uh, COPX, which is another uh, it's copper miners as okay. opposed to gold and silver. That's a copper miner ETF that had a really good day came in just like silver did and put in this nice bottoming tail so i'm seeing more and more strength in commodities and that's basically where i'm focusing so copper which the technicians actually call dr copper oh, yeah. the idea is yeah. that if copper is a building material it it generally speaking won't be pushing higher in markets that people are scared about building stuff because you need copper for everything that you build so Quite often for uh, CMTs used as just an overall strength of the market. If copper is moving higher, then you probably shouldn't be worried about any sort of market collapse. That and then just, again, the UNG is the, uh, the little bit of a scalp that I'm taking around the bottom there.
No, I like that. I think that's well, well worth the risk, and hopefully that does pan out for everybody. And also that XME you brought to us earlier as well. But I, I, that's something, look, you learn something new every day. I never heard that term before, Dr. Copper, so I probably will steal that from you. Um, okay, Michael, it's 4.30. I wish you the best of luck. I hope I see you on Friday, but I have a feeling I won't. So until then, everybody can find you where? On X and on YouTube. Anything else you want to talk about? I know you're on Instagram as well. Instagram, Substack. You, if you Google Michael Noss, you'll, you'll find a bunch of stuff out there. Yep, go get that subscription with Substack. Thank you so much, Michael Noss. And thanks for everything. Let's, best of luck to you. Best of luck to UNG. Um, and once again, thank you so much for coming all the time. And Trader TV 20 for trade ideas. Thanks for having me. Talk thank to you, you soon. Thank you, Michael. There it is. That's Trader Talk. See, that's the thing. If we can combine here on the show, like, you know, someone like Michael looking at the charts, you guys giving some ideas in the chat, and then not only that, but having access to Michael, be able to ask him questions live on the air, being able to ask him questions on X, on Instagram, and through Substack and all of that. Thank you, Michael, for once again coming through. Um, and, of course, we go back and forth. He's waiting for an addition to the family. So um, thank you so much, Michael Noss, for coming through on that one. And we are very, very excited for that. Okay, well, the next topic, of course, we got to get out of here. But today's sticky note, because I, I got a playoff game with my kid today. Uh, very, very excited. I'm so excited for him. They made it all the way to the, like, the um, Ontario Provincials. Uh, which is big, so we're very, very excited about that. I did uh, tweet something out here about gold versus mining stocks. So you can see the major gold companies are well underperforming. So this goes to some of the tweets that I'm talking about. Go find me at Trader TV, Sean, both on Instagram and on X. But this is kind of interesting. Um, it's just been, you know, the physical outproducing. So that's kind of interesting. I would almost rotate around and get into some of these names and get some dividend um, out of all of that. So that's something pretty interesting. Look, we talked about this. Three green traders on the floor today. You saw one of them. And honestly, it's just about being simple. Keep it simple, stupid. We wanted Amazon long. We wanted Apple long. We wanted Tesla long. These are all bangers. We didn't get Tesla. We wanted Robinhood. We can go view that. And then we wanted AMD short, which we never got to 174. Look, Sean, what about all these prices, man? Amazon, 186. What, what's up with that? Okay, so let's think about how we traded this. Just real quickly, then we get roll call. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. That is for sure. Um, over 2,000 of you still with us. We're on X. We're on TikTok. We're everywhere. We're trading on Instagram and all that. All right, so what about Amazon? Well, here it is. So here's Amazon. Get out of here, Epic Pen. Uh, I'll put this over here as well. We'll get our uh, roll call up next. So as this fell in, we took our first fills at 186, but look, it fell hard into 186. When this happens really early, we have learned our lesson here. Let me put this right here so we can see that we're gonna get roll call coming very, very soon. When this falls in, right off the open, we've learned our lesson. We're not taking that 186 off the open. It's an area of interest for us. So we'll look at this, then it comes right back in, and I said, you know what? If we break this 185, then we're out. Let it fall back in. We get 185.50, boom, all the way back up to the upside. Definitely bang, 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 giving us those great feels because it came all the way back. Nice move. Then we dropped into 185. We're not buying 186. Why? Because 186 hasn't held. Uh, traders. 185 is held. We let this thing fall all the way back in. Then it breaks 185 and we go, oh no, that's a fail. Okay, we're still green on the name. All right, all right. Comes back in, hits 185 again, and that's when we get that party started all the way back up to the upside. Apple again. It was all a dream because we took Apple back down in here into 168.50. As we wrote down, boom, nice take on 168.50 for Apple. Only gets a little lower into that level. But again, all of these are just areas to start your trades and areas that we're looking at. We can't say anything without doing roll call. All right, so who's here today? 
Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us. As look, it's been a very, very interesting day. But without you, we don't have anybody. And who's here right now? We have 1,800 watching. Oh, I didn't even hit the like. There we go. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. This also gets produced as a podcast after. So let's go right now for roll call. Who's here? Thank you so much, Bears vs. Bulls. I always have to thank you. Without that, we don't have anything. Thank you for all the moderation. But who's here? I'll, oh, you know what? We didn't get to spin anything today. Let's do a quick spin. Spin 200. All right. Hey, Andrew Chow. He's here as well. Larry's mobile detailing. Get all your mobile detailing done with Larry on the chat. So shout out to you, Larry. Dylan's here. Kling Daddy is here. Mike Breeze is here. Streamlabs is here. What? Streamlabs? Fail. I lost. Bye-bye. 200 points. What's up to uh, Caputi Electronic Music Producer? You need your music produced? Shout out to Caputi Electronic uh, right here. D. Westermeyer's here. He wants to bang, so we'll go bang, bang, bang. Thanks so much to Joe Schmo is here today. There's Larry. Odyssey Flights, Mike Breeze, Chris Burton. Everybody's here today as well. Okay, I got to get out of here. It always feels good when you can put another green check mark in the blotter, and we do that today. I want to thank Michael Noss for joining me. I want to thank the market for being a little sleepy at the end of the day. Give us a lot to talk about. We had talked about Eclipse, which didn't turn out to be too much. I hope if you were looking for that, you're able to see it. I'm looking forward to a good family night tonight. Spend some time with the kids. What else is new? At a rink. Hopefully they have the heaters on at the rink. That's the worst. That's my pet peeve. You pay all this money, 400 bucks an hour uh, for ice, and then they don't heat the rink. Shout out to everybody. We'll see you tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning. Trader TV Live. I'm Sean Coutinho. See you then.